Hello everyone and welcome to Tokyo Talk. This is our Paralympic edition and joining me today on the left of your screen is Meg Lemon, on the right of your screen is Paige Greco and Stewie Tripp. Welcome everyone. Thanks Matt. Thank welcome girls. Stewie, the last time you and I spoke, we were you were in lockdown in Victoria and we were trying to raise the spirits of all of our Victorian members because the games had just been cancelled not long before and we were all going to sit around until 2021. 2021 is upon us, but luckily you got a little bit more sunlight this time, mate. You're not sitting yeah. in a shed somewhere <laughs> with a beanie on, not trying to freeze no. to death. So how's the, well, how's the training? Yeah, it's going well, mate. Going well. Uh, it's certainly a lot more up here in sunny Brisbane than what it is in Thailand at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's good. It's just, it's been going well. So you're all in Brisbane training at the moment? Yeah, yes. We all are. Now, Stu, you've been to Rio before. I'll talk about that in a little while. But our debutantes in the Paralympic team, Meg and Paige, how exciting is it? It's a year on, but how excited are you about going to the Paralympics for the first time? Oh, um, yeah, I'm super excited. Um, yeah, it feels starting to feel very real now, watching like the Olympics and stuff. It's um, Yeah, and then it's our turn in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, very excited. And Meg? Yeah, I guess um, it's been a bit of a dream and um, it feels like a little bit of fantasy for a little while. And I think probably watching the Olympics, um, I was fascinated, blown away. And then it kind of hit me when someone said, that'll be you in a couple of weeks. And I was like, no, no way. And um, yeah, so I think, yeah, probably the last couple of weeks, it's hit hit pretty hard and, and excited, a little bit scared, but probably more excited than anything. Now, you've had the opportunity to sit around like the rest of us over the last couple of weeks and and see the action coming out of Tokyo. Yeah. Does that help seeing it and seeing the environment? Do you feel like when you get off the bus at the Olympic Village, it's going to feel a little bit like I've been here before, I feel more relaxed? Or does the anxiety build because you've seen it and it looks huge? Uh, oh, do you want to ask that girl? Absolutely. You go, you go. We're not, we're not going to the village. <laughs> we're not, we're not, we don't go to the village at all. Because of where the, where the Tokyo, where, because of where Mount Fuji Raceway is located, yep. it's like a two hour, two and a half hour drive from the village. So we've got hotel accommodations like one hotel that's an hour away from it and then another one that's 45 minutes away from it. So we don't actually go into the village at all. Oh, that's a downer, Stu. Yep. Um, oh, well, it's just different, isn't it? Like it's, it is. It is. It's very year, much. So it's, it's, it's a different set of circumstances. And um, I think it would be more like, for, for, for me, any, or for us anyway, I think it would be more like a, attending a world championship or a, or a world cup event where we're all together as a team. Um, I know the village is an exciting experience for people, but sometimes what happens is a team gets a bit disjointed because you might be all sitting on you, know, you might be able to stay on different levels of the accommodation block. You might not be you're not all having lunch or dinner at the same time because everyone's pretty full on when they get in the village. And the schedule's so so full on the schedule that people are coming and going, coming and going. You don't sort of get to see teammates unless you make an appointment for someone to say, I oh, will meet here at this time. Um, so I think the hotel environment we're going to would be much better for people. Uh, given that we're used to that environment when we go away from the World Cups and World Championships. So I did see that the track team, excuse me, <coughs> the track team and the road team didn't necessarily stay at the village for the Olympic Games. They were off in hotels around the place uh, for the same reasons. So, yeah. Meg, how big is the team going to the Paralympics? How many riders are we talking about, do you know? Um, we've got 12 riders, so not all of us are up here in Brisbane, unfortunately, um, due to some of the lockdowns and um, border closures, but we've got, I think, about seven or eight of us up here. Um, so there's there's five females, I believe, and seven men. Um, and, yeah, so basically probably just over half the team are track, um, and then the rest are track and road or just road. And, Paige, which events uh, will you be competing in for this Olympics, Paralympics? Yes, yeah, so I'll be competing in the three kilometre individual pursuit on the velodrome and then on the road I'll be doing the 
the time trial and the road race for C3. And a world champion already. Um, now, I had the joy of watching you race on the track at the Brisbane World Cup, if I'm not mistaken. And this time you've got the real opportunity to put that other medal in the trophy cabinet. How often do you go to bed at night thinking about that? Um, you know, I've definitely visualised and, um, you know, myself, um, you know, how I'd plan out the race and um, thought about going through the process and um, that on the day, but I've just kept bringing myself back to just my process, my like a good warm-up, good sleep the night before and just focus on my own race and then um, whatever the outcome will be. Yeah, it will be, so just, yeah. It'd be amazing if I if that were to happen, but, yeah, just focus on, the, on my process and the race. Yeah. Stu, you've been to an Olympics already, had some success there. What do you take into this Olympics uh, in the build-up? What advantage is it to have been there before already? Uh, is it a huge advantage to you, knowing what's coming? Or is it just part of the process and you know where you're at? Um, I, 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 I think it's a little bit of both. So I, I went to London in 2012. That was my first one. And that was overwhelming. Right. Uh, so I was pretty warm before I went to Rio. I, I sort of knew I should expect when I went to Rio. And um, the preparation of going to Rio was, was really was spot on on point and the race execution was on point. So, you know, we, we, we did everything right and we, we got the result for it. Um, I, I think first time going to, and, and this, remember this is gonna be very different to what other games have been like. Um, it can be overwhelming. Yeah, you know, I remember going to, when I was in, in London, we were racing around Brands Hatch and uh, we got there and there's helicopters flying overhead and I'm like, what are, I wonder what they're doing. And it never dawned on me that, because I've never, I've never raced with helicopters flying like that before, ever. There's music blaring and there's people in the stands, stands are packed with people. I'm like, wow, this is completely different to any I've ever experienced before in my racing, you know, racing World Cups, World Championships. So that was that was completely overwhelming. And I sort of knew what to expect in a bit in Rio. Uh, Smaller crowds in Rio, not as many no helicopters buzzing over, not as many helicopters as I don't think was buzzing overhead. I, I wasn't tuned in for that. But uh, yeah, it can be overwhelming, certainly. A silver medal in Rio. Now, uh, how's the form, mate? I'm going to ask the, the one question athletes don't want to answer. How is the form and where are you in comparison to last time? Well, I'll start by saying I didn't think this was going to go ahead. Yeah. Up until that, up until that, until until the team was picked, even after the team was picked, I still didn't believe it was going to go ahead. Yeah. I thought, I, I thought definitely having the, the Olympians in there first, they were going to mess it up. They were, they, they you know, they're a loose bunch of cannons, those girls and girls. I thought they're going to, they're going to mess it all up, and it's going to be. Sorry, guys, we've done it. And then, as then when they pulled it off, it was like, oh, it's going to happen, right? Eh? Okay. It never stopped me training. Like it never, never at once interrupt my training. Like I was, I, you know, I, I race for many different reasons, and and and, and probably I race. I, I roll my bike for my mental health, and it's pretty well known. And I train for my mental health. Um, the racing to get to do these things is just really. You know, cream on top of the cake for me. So, how's form going? Yeah, it's going right. I don't know. I haven't raced these boys since 2019, so I've got no idea how we, everyone else is at. And, and they've um, got no idea about you as well, which is the best part. No, that's the same thing. So, yeah, it's going to be one of those really open book races where anything could happen. No one, no one knows where anyone's at. I mean, I mean, the other boys race the world championships earlier this year in Portugal so some of those guys would know where they're at but it's very hard to look at when you look at a results sheet to go oh this guy's informal this guy's informal this guy's you know very hard to 
judge a race after it's finished if you haven't been participating in it. So I've got no idea where they're at. Excellent. Meg, tell us all what events you'll be competing in at this Paralympics. Oh, I'm about the same as Paige. So um, in the velodrome or the track, I've got the 3K um, IP, um, individual pursuit, and then I'll have a time trial. Um, so I'll do three laps of the um, the Fuju course. Um, so going around the, the racetrack there and then the road race, I think, is about um, 80Ks for me. So um, looking forward to climbing some hills and um, maybe, uh, yeah, just putting in a bit of hurt and or maybe putting in some hurt for myself. <laughs> Well, I know you can climb hills. The last time I got to speak to you, the only time I've ever been able to speak to you uh, was in Ballarat a couple of years ago at one of the uh, morning teas. that They had star riders like yourself turn up and talk to the local councillors and so forth, which is wonderful. The hills, I don't think you have a problem with, but how are you going to handle the differences in Japan? Uh, we saw the humidity and the heat. Is that going to be a problem to you? Oh, I think, like, I guess um, we can all um, have a little bit of a problem with the heat, but um, I guess probably the last few years we've been training um, as if, um, I guess, uh, acclimatising to the heat. Um, so we've been doing sessions in the heat chamber, we've been doing saunas, this little mini mini hot boxes, which are mini saunas, popping our heads out. Um, and then, um, yeah, I guess being up here in Brisbane, me and Paige have been up here for a, a few extra weeks now, so just training in the heat. Um, so I think... You know, putting a few protocols in place and making sure we are acclimatised, but also have um, calling strategies in place before, during, as much as we can, and afterwards um, are a big factor. I think um, probably being able to take on any fluids during any of the races is, is a bit of a problem for some of us, but um, we'll do what we can. And um, watching probably, I guess, the Olympics has has probably um, shown that um, that adapting and making sure we are okay with the heat is actually going to be um, quite beneficial in those conditions. Now, I just want to make clear with all of our audience, you're in Brisbane because uh, you want to make it hotter and the Anamiz Velodrome is there. It's not because you're pampered superstar athletes who needed to be in Brisbane because you didn't want to be in the cold, nasty weather. Let's just, let's just clear that one up. It's not about being pampered and put in cotton wool now, is it? No, not I think, much all that heat acclimation. Yeah, <laughs> I think we've all done our fair share of winters um, and training for for a number of hours in the cold and wet. Um, so I, I think we've deserved it. <laughs> 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 no, but it is a matter of acclimatization and I guess being in the environment together and um, yeah, doing what we can to to give us the best preparation we can. Now, who are the coaches? I I, I know a number of coaches over there the years who have taken the Paralympic team away. Who are the coaches in charge for you this time? We've, we've got a few. So um, I guess we've got Dave Betts, who's mainly um, managing the road. Um, we've got Cam or Cameron Jennings, who is in charge of the track and a few of us. Um, and Nick Formosa, who, who's probably been to a few of them before. I think it could be Dave and Cam's first one as yeah. a team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and so are they the main main ones? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's it. and then Ryan McDonald is the yeah boss. yeah he's there, yeah. the head coach. Yeah. Now I'll ask a serious question. Now I know three of those four blokes quite well, um, especially Was and Nick. Now I've got to ask a very serious question about these coaches because they will be watching this. Who isn't on the Christmas card list? out of those coaches for you athletes at the moment and who needs to get themselves on the Christmas card list for you athletes amongst your coaches right now? Oh, I, reckon it, I reckon they're all on the list. Like, <laughs> we've got, a, we got a, an, an extremely amazing bunch of support staff around us. Like, that's, not, that's not flying smoke. That's, that's true. We've got a, a, amazing athletes and, a, and an amazing support system around us and we're very fortunate to have that um that's the poli no, that's the politician so answer Stu. i'll ask you off camera <laughs> that's okay no i totally understand no, no, uh, no, 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 that's that's the honest truth like it's it is an amazing group of people it is um, i've always i've always fortunate. stepped back watching uh the commonwealth games because i was lucky enough to be there calling the action for com games uh at the enemy's velodrome and then got to see the team uh, conduct itself at the Brisbane World Cup and 
like I do know Warren and I do know Nick very well from racing with them back in the day and I know how passionate they are about this team and so mm. forth so I know you're an absolutely magnificent hands and it was more about giving them a real build up because uh, I don't think we hear enough about the support behind the scenes for these Olympic teams yes athletes have to go and do the job but there is a real big support network for our athletes in this process isn't there I, I agree with you Matt that they, the unsung heroes of, uh, like we, we don't do it by ourselves there's no one no one jumps on a bike and wins a medal um because I say to people, I'm good at turning the handle. That's about all I do. That's all, all I know. Like, you know, one, like Nick Owen, who's my sports scientist, he writes a program for me. Um, yeah, my nutritionist, Kylie Andrews, she tells me what to eat. If I've got knots in my back, Bertie picks those out for me. Um, you know, if I need to get from point A to point B, that's Was is doing that for me or, or Dave Beck. So it's like, you know, I just turn the handles. And it's easy to it's easy to do. I don't have to think about any other thing. It's just, just here's what I give you like, sure, get to it. They put you in the position to be able to bring the best out of yourself, which is their job. But it's, and that, uh, it and takes a bit more. It takes a lot of passion from the heart from a coach to make sure you're able to do that, which is fantastic. Yeah. Stu, I'm going to ask you about your um, journey to Paralympics, but because I've, I've asked it once before, but I'm going to ask the girls first, and I'll come back to you. Meg, what brought you to the sport of cycling? Um, so I guess I had um, I had an accident um, when I was working up in Darwin. Um, I was riding a bike, just commuting at the time, um, and I got hit by a car. So um, I don't remember any of the accident, but um, I did. I came back to Adelaide where my family was, and and I was challenged to to get back on a bike to face a fear um, by one of the physios at the time. Um, and as soon as I got on a bike. Um, the first thing I was worried about was probably remembering my accident. Um, but I started um, riding one of those those free bikes that you can just get in the city. Um, I just felt a sense of freedom. I just kind of forgot about all my problems and what was wrong with me. And um, and from then on, I think I've probably... Um, I've not been able to stop riding because it's just brought me so much joy. So um, I guess for me probably a little bit similar to a lot of people in this in this team including Stewie it's um it's kind of been a part of my rehab and and been a big part of brain neuroplasticity but allowed me to I guess rebuild my life um when I didn't really have any other purpose um and now I've been able to to meet so many great people um including my teammates and the staff um I've made friends socially um and now I've rebuilt some of my career as well so um yeah I think I wouldn't know any other way now. Fantastic. Paige, do you mind me asking you the same question? What brought you to the bike? Yeah, so I actually started um, uh, sport I doing athletics. Um, so I did para athletics and I went to a um, like Paralympic um, like talent search day and um, I tried a few different sports and tests. And, that, and they said that I should try cycling. Um, so I think I was about 11 or 12 then, but then um, went back to athletics. And then once I'd finished, I'd um, finished with athletics, felt like I accomplished what I wanted to. Um, I thought I'd give cycling a go. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought, yeah, I thought it was really cool. The places that you can go and travel to and compete because um, I love to travel and then um, yeah I just I really enjoyed it um, yeah fantastic Stu I've asked you this question before but I, and, and I love the answer and the way you go about it um, cycling really was that lifesaver for you wasn't it when you got onto your machine oh, mate everything I have in my life now is because I started riding bike yeah literally everything um yeah, you know, I was five years post my accident, and I was ready to. I was suicidal. I was ready to. I knew exactly what I was going to do, how I was going to finish. And uh, friends and family encouraged me to go and see a psychologist. It's very hard for a bloke to go and do, like, a, especially a country boy, to go and see someone talk about how you're feeling, especially when you're feeling shit. And um, I saw this guy who was. Like he was an old, he's like my dad's age, probably a bit older than my dad, 
And uh, I remember the first time I saw him, I went into his office and, and I told him just about what was going on in my life right at that moment. Like, you know, I'd, I'd slept with a girl, I had, uh, had moved back to Toronto and I was very unhealthy. Like I was drinking, I was self-medicating and I wasn't, wasn't in a very good place. Started crying and asked him if he could, like I begged him, can you help me? And uh, he said, I think I can. Um, I'd come back and see me next week. So I went back the next week and he says, Do you do any exercise? I went, No. He goes, Why don't you try some exercise? And I remember I I was in trail at the time and I, and I drove out to Churchill, which was the closest pool, just like a, 20, a 25 metre pool and inside pools. And uh, I had a panic attack on the way out there and I didn't know what to do. Like I pulled over on the side of the road and I'm crying and and uh, finally got to church and jumped in the pool. It just felt so much better to be in the water and doing something. And, mm. and like, this is back in 2000. So well before we mainstreamed the associated mental health with exercise and how good exercise was for you. And so I started swimming first. And then about 2003, a friend of mine introduced me to the bike. And uh, I remember when I first got on my trial, hand cycle, I'm going to have a go. I just, I just put the pressure through those pedals and went, oh God, how much anger and frustration and shit am I going to get out on these things? And then, and then the secondary thing that came through was how, how, how good this feels to be able to move um, at a pace. You can move at a walking pace, you can walk, move at a jogging pace, you can move at a sprinting or running pace, and there was no, there was no pain or discomfort in my legs associated with that, which was a huge um, adrenaline rush. Like, how far can I take this? And, and I haven't looked back since. Like, I just and, and now it's my therapy. Like, it's it's what I, you know, even if I wasn't doing stuff I'm doing now, being here, going to high priority games, I'd be still riding my bike every day for for, the, for the mental exercise. Thank you all for giving me that feedback on those questions because it's, it's it's a hard question to ask from my position, but I know you, you've all got a very good answer for it. And, and Stu, like I said, I've asked you that question before and I was uh, very taken back by your answer the first time. And it, you know, I, it's the same this time, mate, and even though I knew the answer. And I love the fact that you all pretty much say the same thing, that freedom and mental health about riding a bike, and, and that helps Paralympians, but it helps pretty much everybody in everyday society about getting on a bike and riding. Uh, and we all, we all know that. We're all bike riders and we all know that. Now, 2021, 2022, Com Games comes around very quickly, and then Paris. There's a lot to look forward to in the next three years. All of a sudden, now that we're now that we're kicking off, how exciting is that? Post post Tokyo, I don't want to brush over the top of Tokyo too quickly because it's it's taken another year to get there. But there's a lot to look forward to uh, over the next three years, isn't there? There is. I was going to come around really quickly too. Right. Um... When you say four years, it's going to be four years. It seems like a long time. But when you say three, it seems like it's just around the corner. I say um, four years, you can have a year and a half off and get back yeah, into it. That's right. Well, well, back in the day, the, for the, year, the year after Paralympic Games was always a no rubber. So there were no points in offer. There were no, they still had a World Championship. They might have a couple of World Cups. But if you want to turn up, we weren't penalised for, you know, for losing, losing points. But now... It's bang on. So, you know, year one, you start collecting points right from where you go. And they've added another world championship into the Paralympic year as well. So, um, so the calendar's only getting deeper, um, which is great for the sport. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be, as soon as this is over, it's going to be a little bit of time off and straight back in again. Straight back into it. Girls, how, does oh, it, how exciting is it for you, yourselves this next three years? Because... I won't be rude to Stu, but I don't know if he's going to be there for 2032. But the two of you, one eye open, thinking about it possibly? I've, I've thought about it. I thought it'd be, it does seem like, yeah. So let, let, let's, let's bring it back to the next three years. How exciting is the next three years, knowing that now the timeline becomes a lot shorter. Games, games, worlds, then another Olympics. It's really that short. How exciting is that for the, the two of you? 
yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, I'm really excited thinking about the next cycle. Like, um, yeah, as you said, usually, um, you know, the year after the games, it's a little bit quiet, but next year, you know, it will, um, you know, there's still points and that. So, um, I feel like after the games, I'll still be on a bit of a high and just really looking forward to the next, next few years. So, yeah, no, it's exciting to think about. And Meg? Yeah, I had a lot of plans for after Tokyo or other people had plans for me. Um, but um, I think they've been uh, chatting here about how track worlds could be in Italy potentially and I've been been uh, dreaming of going back there. So I, I'm not sure if I'm going to have much time off. Um, if I'm honest, I might have to just keep keep at it for a little while and um, and just, yeah, do one, one bit at a time. I think I'd love to travel again and... Um, and Paris, yeah, is something to really look forward to. I think maybe embrace the opportunity of Tokyo and and hopefully, you know, do the best I can. But if I can't control what others, how good others go, um, use it as a little bit of fire in my belly and um, sure I'll have plenty to work on to to drive me towards Paris. I've never been, so I think it will be something to, to look forward to. Um, and I, I would love to hang in until 32, but... Um, Let's see how we go. We'll, we'll take it one, one day at a time. We'll go, we'll go Paris and LA first. And yeah, then, okay. Then, Sounds- then we'll see how we are. Then we'll see how we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stu, like, uh, you know, we talk about mental health and, and what it's done for you and so forth. And what's the biggest piece of advice you can give your two younger teammates here? And I say younger based on purely and simply it's their first, yes, they're younger, but it's their first games. What piece of advice... Are you giving other team members about going to this Paralympics? None. None. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> oh no! Just, just go and have fun. Like, enjoy what you do. And if you put yourself under too much pressure or anxiety, you're not going to enjoy what you do. And and if you want good results to be best, then you need to enjoy what's happening um, and, the, and I think the two can exist in the same space so forget about the pressure stuff and just just enjoy it because um, that's when you'll do your best when you're, you know, I remember before uh, Rio before the time flow in Rio I spoke to my wife and uh, it was about maybe an hour before I started warming up and, and, and she said how are you going and I'm like yeah I'm going right I'm, going to, I'm a little bit anxious and she goes yeah that's, that's understandable and I'm like you know, you've got a big race coming out. And I said, yeah, but I'm anxious because I don't think I'm anxious enough. Like, I don't think I'm going to get the giddy up on what I need to get the giddy up on. And that's how I approach it. Like that's, I'd rather be anxious about not being anxious than be anxious about um, what's going to happen in a race. I've got, you know, I can only do my best in. So, um, you know, it's, about, it's always preparation putting in now that I think will allow us to do our best. What's been the biggest yeah. change you've seen uh, like, I was impressed. Like, I, I was lucky enough 20 years ago and 30 kilos lighter to ride on the front of a tandem uh, for a sight impaired athlete for a season or so in WA. And everyone in those days was always scrounging around for equipment. And the one thing I do see now is when the Paralympic team walks into the track, all the equipment looks like the Olympic team. Has that been the biggest change? Or one of the biggest changes in the in the Paralympic team. Uh, I think certainly there's been a a, a, a bit of a lift in equipment, um, but, but I think the overall professionalism of the team has has gone up a few notches. Like it's we understand who we are, and and we're all we're all professionals at what we do. That's what we that's what we hear, and we all act accordingly. And we all, you know, and I think that's why our team works so well together there's a whole, you know, we've got the utmost respect for each other um, and we do the best to encourage each other to be the, the best they can possibly be so I think that lift up in in professionalism has, I've certainly seen over my time being in this thing no, uh, Normally when I've done these sorts of podcasts uh, we did one and we had Tiffany Cromwell and we had uh, Matt Richardson and and 
and uh, we've had Lauren Reynolds. So they've all been from a different discipline and they've all been in a different part of the world when I've asked them something to ask questions of each other. So it's a little bit difficult to get you guys asking questions of each other because you, you spend so much time with each other. You, you know each other. I don't think there'd be too many secrets. So <laughs> what I'll do is, who is your main support, Meg, behind the scenes at home? Who, who are the ones that have helped you get to where you are here today? Oh, there's probably a few too many to, to name. I guess um, every time I kind of have an idea, someone else maybe reaches out to me and I, I remember how much they played a part. So um, so I guess, you know, first of all, I guess probably my parents are number one um, and my sister have been, yeah, there from the start. Um, they probably um, were, were very scared when I got back on a bike and I probably didn't know it at the time. Um, I think my mum had a little bit of a heart attack every time I got on a bike. Um, but but now they realise that it, it actually brain has brought brought the the blue back into my eyes. So um, I think they know if I if I didn't ride, I'd be a bit like Stu and and probably not be here right now. Um, and then I guess for me the the person that got me into paracycling and that kind of saved my life there and and gave me purpose was um, my first coach Loza. Um, he was also associated with with Paige and and a couple of others. So. Um, for, for me, he's a really big mentor and, and support still and, and helps me to learn how to, I guess, continue developing my skills on a bike as well. Um, and then I, obviously I've got got my coach now, Cam. Um, you know, he's given up, you know, uh, all his time basically to help to help us, um, you know, me and, and others and, and, and the support staff. So we've got Karen, Birdie, um, yeah, we've got Jamie, we've got so many people here, Waza, um, who I know work, you know, I don't think they sleep um, to, to get us to where we are. And um, and then obviously I've got, yeah, friend, friends back home and, and people that I ride with um, back home. So, yeah, I don't know, it's endless. <laughs> <laughs> Paige, I, I put the same question to you. Um, yeah, so back home, my family, um, yeah, my, my big supporters, um, they've just, they've been there from and start and they you know they were there with me through athletics and then you know when I didn't I always wanted to make the Paralympics in athletics and then you know they were there then when um you know I didn't make the team and then you know now I'm here for cycling and I've you know made the team so it's you know I'm, I'm writing for myself obviously here but then you know they've play, played such a big um big role and just um you know, when when I was yeah younger, my I you know I always yeah I always wanted to make the team, and my you know my mum always used to come with me to my competitions and stuff, and then yeah now I'm just sharing it all with them. I was showing photos of the, we got our kit the other day, and yeah I was showing photos and stuff. So yeah, back home all my family, and then. Yeah, I've got an amazing team here as well, with all the staff and athletes and that supporting me. How cool is it to get that big Australian Olympic team sports bag absolutely bursting with gear? How much fun is it to receive that? It's kind of oh, like Christmas. And so <laughs> I was a bit overwhelmed and was jumping up and down, I think. Yeah, Just all the... Yeah, yeah it, it was good, but it was a bit overwhelming. There was so much. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> double checking all the and Yeah, but you know, it was it was pretty cool. It was pretty. Like, so, we, like we 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 watch from afar, us mortals, uh, mere mortals who, who don't get to go to the uh, Paralympics. But there's the Dunlop volley sneakers that are special just to the team. There's then there's then there's sneakers to go on the podium. What was They're just for um, the Olympic team, but we get. Um... I'm buying you a pair. Yeah, that's it, Meg. I'm going to buy you a pair. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately we don't get them, but we we're lucky. We still get. Um, I'm going online stuff. and I'm buying you a pair. You're supposed to have a pair. That's it. Yeah. No, I think we're still lucky to get a few things that maybe the the Olympic team don't get, but um, um, yeah, we 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 get we still get some pretty cool stuff. So um, I think at the end of the day, yeah, I think we got five hats. So I'm sure um. My, my nephew or some family and friends will enjoy them. <laughs> I think Stewie's kids might have probably raided half of his kid already. <laughs> well, at the risk of me losing my job as interviewing Olympic team and Paralympic teams, 
The Paralympic team need Dunlop volleys for those who are listening. So get on it. How yeah. terrible. How terrible. Stu, uh, we've talked, I've talked about it. I keep on referring back to something a lot of people might not have watched, but we've chatted before, mate. And you talk about your family behind mm-hmm. the scenes. Um, you've had a great deal of support uh, before you even started racing these things. Do you want to just oh, give yeah. a shout yeah. out there? Oh, send them up. To my wife, to Jilly, my wife, and, and, and Malachi and Murph, my boys. Uh, if we just tell you a quick funny story about um, Brisbane 2032. So yeah, come on, this Jilly is this is what the this is what the audience wants. They so, want the so Jilly, trip stories. So, so, so Jilly and my older boy Malachi are up in up in uh, it's like uh, top of the bed, and they're sitting up in the bed, and Malachi goes, "Mummy." How old will I be in 2032? And Julie goes, oh. He goes, she goes, why is that? And they worked out he'd be nine, I think he was 19. And she, she goes, why is that? She goes, oh, mummy, I'm going to go to the Olympics. And Julie goes, what's what are you going to do? He goes, oh, I don't know yet. I'll work it out though. <laughs> I was just like, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, good on you, mate. Um, another, one, another one of mine <clears throat> told me that Malachi would be old enough to drive me to, <laughs> to Brisbane in 2032. <laughs> but so I get great support. I get great support from my family and and, and friends, like uh, random friends. So I've got my core friends that that will ring me up. I've only talked to my mate JJ today, and Scotty I spoke to two days ago, and uh, and I get a text from my mate Gibbo in, in Bright. He'll just text me out of the blue, going, "How you going? You know where you're at." Uh, and, I'll, and I'll literally get random messages from some people that I haven't spoken to for quite some time and I'll just be going, yeah, who'd you make to say, mate, um, go for it, hope you have a great time. And so I'm very lucky to have a, a, a broad support base in, 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 in that respect to uh, get me through that. And um, I know that I can call them at any time and have a talk about what, what was going on inside my head at the time and if I need, I need some help. So um, it's, it's, I'm very lucky. Well, as always, I'm in awe of this team every time they go and compete. And one thing I can guarantee you of, I say this to the girls more than Stewie because Stewie knows, when the Australian Paralympic team walks into the velodrome, everybody stops what they're doing and has a look, okay, because you are revered in, in that way by your competitors. So just remember that, yes, you're supposed to get nervous before the start because you never produce your best result unless you do get nervous before the start. So just remember that. And also remember now, Stewie's already able to do this, but on the bottom of your resume, on the bottom of your signatures for the rest of your life on an email, it's going to say Paralympian. And that's something to be very proud of for the rest of your lives. And it's an absolutely fantastic achievement. So absolutely big well done to you. Uh, Next time you're having dinner with Nick Formosa, just get him to tell you the story of how he ran second to me in the championship one year in Queensland. And uh, and I've got the photo to prove it, and so does he. So, uh, look... (laughs) On behalf of all of the Aus Cycling members, all of the fans of the Paralympics and the Paralympic team around Australia, I just want to wish you all the best and I hope we can catch up uh, when you've survived lockdown on the way home. Um, wish you all the best and I, I expect to see some bling hanging around your necks next time we get a chance to speak. Thanks, Matt. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you for having us. Absolute pleasure. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye. See ya, thank you.